I like to say. trap people. Yeah. Oh, you're doing a great job. <laughs> I'm a slippery snake, though. My name is Natalie, and I'm here with... Trevor. And we're going to be talking about veganism today. So uh, you said you used to be vegetarian, is that right? Yeah, I was a vegetarian for three years. Okay, and what inspired you to do that? Uh, it started. I used to go to this uh, water, uh, to fill my water jug at this, like, uh, sort of... Um, like it was like a Chinese shop that filled your water with alkaline water and then she had these like herbs and stuff like that and she's like if you do these herbs cleanse you have to not eat meat for a month and you have to do this regimen of like fruits vegetables and grains only no alcohol just water no cigarettes no nothing. alcohol I know it was tough it was tough but I got <laughs> yeah. through the 30 days and afterwards I ate like this plate of chicken tenders and fries that I wanted so bad after I got yeah, out of yeah. it and literally the chicken grease was leaking out of my skin oh that's disgusting yeah and I was just yeah. like okay I think I'm gonna go vegetarian and it lasted way longer than I thought it was Hmm? Uh, you can go. Oh, it's okay. Go ahead. It's go fine ahead, if dude. people walk in front. Don't worry I about it. See that thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so, do you know, like, how would you d define veganism? I mean, there's multitudes of it. Some people do it for the respect out of animals, right? Yeah. They don't want to harm the animals, especially when you see how happy cows are when they're running down the fields or how trainable pigs are, like dogs, you know? Yeah, they can play video games. What? Pigs, like they did this experiment where they were like pl playing video games with their snouts. No. Yeah. Oh, shit, I got to see that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, so I guess I kind of like to define it. To me, it's not really a diet. It's more like a social justice movement for animals, sure. like in the same way that, you know, feminism is for women sure. and that kind of thing. So do you think animals should have rights? Uh, like legally, like give them on paper? Like, uh, <laughs> like uh, should they have the right to like not be exploited, I guess? Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. I, I could see that. It, it, it starts drawing a dangerous line because then you start going into our animals, people, and you right. start crossing it over into like civil rights for humans to equate them to animals. There's a line there because animals are animals at the end of the day. But I understand the concept of yeah. being like, hey, let's not fucking slaughter and fucking uh, yeah. mill them. And I think, you know, that's kind of touching on an important point, which is that vegans, you know, we're not saying that like animals and humans are equal. We're saying that their lives have more value than our taste, pleasure, convenience, and like traditions. What do you think about that? I agree with that. Okay. You actually nailed it perfectly. Sweet, and I think sweet. maybe that's a, a plight of the veganism movement that should be illustrated more often, which is that they're not yeah. trying to get equal rights for humans and animals. Right, it's right. That they're not trying to get cows rights. like a right to vote. Totally, yeah, more yeah. rights for animals in a sense, not yeah. equal rights for humans and animals. Yeah, the right to life and freedom, essentially. I, um, I had a friend for a while who was like, if I saw a dog hanging on the edge of a building and I saw a human hanging on the edge of the building, she's like, I would save the dog. And I was yeah. like, we got to draw the line at a certain point. Where it depends like, on the human. It really does. It really does. Um, so like, right. what would, what stopped you from being vegetarian and like, what would stop you from going vegan? Uh, well, actually I had been, uh, I was, uh, this is tough to put on camera. I was incarcerated for a while and like, they serve you pretty shitty food. Yeah. And uh, I kind of like bucked up and just gotcha. ate what was fed to me. So uh, at that point, it wasn't really your choice. It wasn't really my choice. Yeah. And then uh, I got out and it was like about like, you know, going out to dine with friends and do things and I didn't want to live in fear. However, it did change the landscape of how I eat on a daily or weekly basis. Mm -hmm. There's not meat every day. There's not, there's just not meat every day, period, yeah. you know? And people are often confused, like, how, where, where's the where's the source of your meal there? And I'm yeah, like, yeah. It's, it, it's the spices and the rice. It's yeah. the spices. I mean, uncooked meat, or like unflavored meat is gross too, you know? Definitely, unless that's your thing. I mean, yeah. there's some people, I think there's a channel where a guy actually just eats raw meat. I saw, yeah, yeah, I saw that. Uh, people are always sending me shit like that because I put put up like vegan content and they're like, oh, veganism's bad. Here's this guy who's surviving on raw meat. He's yeah. on his oh, 100th day yeah, I know that guy. and he's just eating like ground beef raw. Yeah. It's like, okay, just because there's some dude who's doing that doesn't like prove veganism wrong. Just it's, you can doesn't mean you should. Exactly, you know? exactly. Well, do you have any good moral arguments against veganism? Huh. I think that like there's the, you could do a blood type test to figure out what diet suits you best and it's been proven pretty consistent. Um, you can let him walk, man, come on. There's been some, like there, you can do like the, the blood test that figures out what diets suit you best. And some people need that B12 increase, which you can get from vegetables and certain vegetables and things like supplements that. Supplements too. And supplements yeah. as well, which oftentimes are also debatable because they're not FDA approved and you can end up just peeing out the vitamins without actually having a interaction on your body. But yeah. if you take the time to figure out what your body needs and it turns out that, you know, once a week, because there's nobody on this planet who needs beef every day, period, end of statement. But there are some people who will, like, their bodies will acquire and require the fucking 
nutrients that come from meat, whatever that means to them. Maybe they're a laborer, maybe they're out there, whatever. You know, it's like there's ways around it for sure. Yeah. But I think that like some people, they just feel it. What's wrong? I right wonder because I've I've tried looking up like some sort of medical condition where you would need animal protein. I've not found anything. It would just be the B12. Yeah, and the thing about B12 is that uh, it comes from dirt. Uh, it doesn't come from plants or animals, but because we sanitize everything, we have to get it from another source. So the animals are also supplemented with B12 in their feed. Uh-huh. So like if you consume animals or plants, like you're going to have to get a B12 supplement either way. Uh-huh. And you're right that you do pee whatever you don't need out, well, but it's not like if you have too much iron in your blood, that can harm you. Uh, you're not going to pee out iron, but any B12, like you can't go over your... B12 and have it be a health risk. Right. Ultimately, um, uh, finding the right diet for the individual is where it's at. And I, you know, I've seen even my brother over here remembers uh, my dad was uh, dating a woman who had uh, four children, and one of them was a vegan, and she was actually the most unhealthy of them all because she did the whole like uh, just the junk food version of veganism, yeah, yeah, yeah. or like also she had the lack of the taste in her food veganism which i think is the perception most people think when they think about veganism yeah and i kind of want to reiterate that you know veganism isn't a diet it's like you know for justice for animals so i'm curious it's closely linked the, to diet. most of our animal exploitation eating. in our lives yeah. does come from diet right. uh for sure so that's a certainly a big part of it yeah. um but yeah so what do you think has higher value human taste buds or animals lives animals lives come on so if you eat uh, animal products, is that kind of going against that idea? Absolutely. Okay. But we're all hypocrites to a degree. To a degree. I guess I'm okay with being a hypocrite or people being hypocrites, as long as there's not a victim who's suffering. Um, or the animal in this case being the victim. The animal's the victim. Yeah, yeah. Do you know how pigs are killed? Probably strung up by their, like, ass end and then gutted from the center down to their chin and then blood drips all over the floor and then they like throw them in a fucking like fridge and hang them there until they can be chopped. <laughs> that was pretty graphic. Uh, so yeah, sometimes their throats are slit, but more commonly more commonly they're killed in gas chambers. That's considered like oh, the most humane way kind of to gas? kill them. CO2. Oh. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's painful. It's very painful. They yeah. usually thrash around for one to two minutes or so. Um, so do you think there's a humane way to kill an animal? Isn't that an oxymoron question? <laughs> yeah. 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 Most people generally say as long as it's quick and painless, right? I don't want to die. And I, yeah. quick or painless or long and painful, I don't, I think it's <laughs> going to suck, you know? So uh, would you consider like completely eliminating animal products? You know, I'm a guy who likes to face myself with like long-term challenges, like a yeah. week of silence or three years of being oh, a that'd be cool. and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I think that I'm doing it naturally. There's just days where I'm like, I don't want this shit. Yeah. It feels heavy and it feels gross. My body's telling me, do not eat the fucking chicken with the fried fucking skin on it. Cause yeah. I'm like, I'm just exhausted after I eat that shit. So I find myself going a week or a day or so without fucking. Yeah, I know this. there's this other vegan guy who talks about how he kind of just went vegan without even noticing it. Um, <laughs> just like eventually he was like, oh, I guess I've been vegan for like three months. Yeah, if you do it right with the right, like, I think that there's a real, also, aside from the animal safety of it all, a misconception about, like, how food's supposed to taste when it's veganism. They're like, oh, it's going to taste like garbage. Oh, there's yeah, no yeah. there's no meat. It's like, dude, you season the meat. You can also season some veggies, you know? Those people have not been to Sweet Soul Food on Broad Street. That Sweet place Soul is great. Food. Plug. Plug for Sweet Soul Food. <laughs> They're so good. So good. Um, uh, yeah. So do you have any questions for me or anything? Or I guess a couple things I like to highlight on it is uh, animal agriculture is car- harming animals terribly, right? But it's also having a really negative effect on everyone. First of all, do you know anything about animal agriculture and pandemics? The relation between the pandemic and it? No. Yeah, or pandemics in general. So 75% of new diseases jump from animals to humans. So scientists have said, like, if you wanted to create a pandemic, the best thing to do would be to design a factory farm. And like COVID, we're not 100% sure it came from a wet market, but it probably did. But like, you know where the 1918 Spanish flu came from? Nowhere. It came from probably a hog farm in Kansas. Um, then, you know, we got swine flu, we got mad cow disease, like the number of pandemics has just been increasing rapidly and it's going to keep increasing as long as we're killing animals in these numbers. Uh, yeah, I've seen, uh, I think it was like a billboard or something that was illustrating several diseases that have plagued us and they've linked to animals. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, so. Almost like a sign. Yeah, Like we should stop fucking eating the animals. It's also kind of ironic that COVID made people like lose their uh, sense of taste. 
and <laughs> <laughs> it's like maybe we should like not prioritize animals lives over taste that's true um and then the other thing is climate change so there was a study that came out in 2018 it showed that the single biggest way you could reduce your impact on the climate would be to go vegan and the guy wasn't vegan when he started the study, but he is now. Uh, I've also heard that just by every American eating meat only once a week could greatly reduce carbon emissions. I'm sure it could. factory products after that, and I say products, I mean cows and chickens and all that stuff, yeah. they have to reduce the amount that they bring in and how they have to do it. So by us eating differently changes the market that creates it, so therefore it cuts down the emissions. Yeah, yeah, it would do a lot of good. And uh, kind of I do want to make a point about reducitarianism that I don't think it's totally ethical because, you know, there's still an individual being harmed. So whether or not you eat meat once a week or seven times a week, obviously once a week is better than seven times a week, but there's that's still going to be an individual I think that's, that's what's suffering. important to note in this is that, like, you're, ha you're having to walk around having a sign, so please talk to me about veganism. Yeah, and yeah. people are like, no, thank you. Yeah, they're like, uh, I won't even take a free beer. But, you know, a lot of, I find that a lot of the things in the polarizing positions that exist in our world today it starts with things that people can nibble on which yeah. is maybe pick one day out of the week where you don't incorporate meat into your dish and then if that moves into two days three days four days you can do so much for your health yeah. and the world around you yeah and there's really no stuff. downside at all um so if you could live a life where you harmed humans harmed animals or harmed neither which would you choose come on <laughs> You've been talking to me for at least 10 minutes now. You know who I am. You would choose neither. Come on. And would be being vegan be more in line with that? Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 for sure. I mean, because that makes me feel like I could be doing my part to adhere uh, to what I just said, which is <laughs> I won't harm animals. I like to trap people. Yeah. Oh, you're doing a great job. <laughs> I'm a slippery snake, though. Uh, okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, sweet. Well, I guess I don't really have any more questions for you. Uh, do you have any more for me? Hey, you enjoying this day? Oh, it's a beautiful day. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I love, I love the French Quarter, man. It's a, it's a crazy place, but it's a beautiful place. There was a parade, uh, people on stilts, and a lot of jugglers, oh, and I enjoyed that. Tight. So yeah. How about you? Uh, I just moved here, like I said, a few months ago, yeah. and uh, we just wanted to go for a walk and take the trolley out to fucking the French Quarter. So here we are. Uh, it's called the streetcar. Streetcar. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Don't hate me, New Orleans. I can tell you just moved here. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we took the streetcar out, and yeah, it's a nice day. I, I love hanging with my brother. He's my best friend. So, yeah, sick. yeah. All right, let's cut it here. Yeah, dope. Thanks for watching. Please hit that like button, and if you missed yesterday's video, click to the left.